assumption that we are live on Twitch right now for Volume Three of Isolation Nation. We here on episode One three. Soccer. It's, it's episode Three, Volume One, buddy. Episode Three. We're still on Volume One. Yeah, you said I, Volume I said, Three. You, you said Volume Three. Can, yes. All right. That, Laura's on every show for the rest of time now because I finally have an ally. Laura Armstrong of the Toronto Star and one of our women's soccer analysts here at One Soccer is joining us from her. Prison? Is that yeah. too? Uh, is that too forward? Feels a little bit like it right now, doesn't it? How many days have you been locked up now? Nine. Nine. So I've for been people who for nine days. <laughs> <laughs> I see a smile on your face, yeah. but I think that's you're forcing that. So yeah. for anyone who may have missed uh, your article on the Toronto Star with the fantastic infographic, which was really well done. Yeah, McKenna I, uh, Dayton, she's fantastic. Yeah, walk us through um, why you've been in your apartment for nine days and, and how close you are to losing your mind. Uh, like fairly close, pretty close. We'll see, we'll see how the next days go. It's kind of like one of those moments where you're like, oh shoot, like come Saturday when technically I'm like allowed outside, I still can't go outside. So that's not going to be that great. But yeah, right. I was at spring training. Like I went left for spring training the day that Florida declared a state of emergency, which was weird because like the Floridians definitely did not <laughs> like care that there was a state of emergency being declared. They were definitely like, this is fine. Let's go to the beach. Let's drink all the alcohol. It was very, very weird. Yeah, exactly. So I was going to spring training to cover the Jays. And yeah, it was really weird. Like it is it, it definitely like we are taking it seriously now, but it it was definitely didn't feel like down there, even when I left, that they were taking it all that seriously. It was still like definitely spring break mode. The Jays obviously took took it seriously, but Florida was like pretty, pretty party hardy still. So mm -hmm. I was like, get me out of here now. These are the same uh, people, and I love Florida, and uh, I have family down in the region who, when hurricanes come at times, sit out in their lawn with lawn chairs and uh, <laughs> uh, check out the approaching storm. So no, uh, answer so many questions. You, I you, you, you admire the spirit, and then you also uh, uh, at the same time fear it. Yeah, 100% <laughs> fear it. Yeah, so, I mean, it sounds like they were partying for like a full week after I left, so who knows? Yeah, well. I don't know, this, you this, the spring breakers were a bit much. I don't know. Some of the scenes coming out of there were a bit ridiculous, but it was kids will be kids. Yeah, it was definitely very eerie, like in actually in spring training as you watched, because I it was Wednesday night that we were, that the NBA shut down and then you go to spring training the next morning and basically you're just like, we know this is going to be shut down. We know it's coming, but like, how is it coming? What is it going to mean? Like, it's a little bit different because they're just starting their season. And it was like eerie. All the guys were like, I don't know where I'm going to go. Like, I don't know. Some of the guys didn't want to stop playing, which I think it just takes a little bit of time to like really understand the gravity of it. And it was definitely like very, it was almost eerie. Like, yeah. Yeah. Didn't was, you have any concerns of getting home though? Like, were you guys like, cause it didn't seem like you, it didn't seem like you guys were, you know, in a, in a great rush to get home or maybe you guys just weren't talking about it. No, it was very, we, we, we definitely all tried to keep it lighthearted, but I also think that you kind of, we kind of knew that it was going to shut down Thursday and then we'd hopefully get home Friday. And we were all on the way back. All of the media was on the same plane and a bunch of Jay's personnel, like office workers and stuff were all on the same plane. It's like the Friday night flight out of Tampa at 9 PM. Um, and it was definitely like, it was weird because you certainly, like, I certainly kind of felt like I had a job to do and I had to finish that job and like see it out at least until Friday when they did their final press conference with the Mark Shapiro, who like said, you know, this is shut down for now. Um, yeah. so it, it definitely kind of felt like we were taking it. I can see how I would seem like we were taking it a little bit nonchalant, but we were just trying to be lighthearted because it was kind of scary. Like, and you yeah. just didn't want to like, you still had a job to do. You didn't want to get um too in your head about it so we were just kind of like trying to joke around and all of we always had somebody like looking at the flight being like it's still open there's still a bunch of seats left you're gonna be fine we're getting on it but yeah it was very it was very very weird moment to be in there if and you we were, we were worried if you had to closing. if you had to drive back with one other jay's beat reporter let's say all the flights were shut down and you had to drive all the way back with just one person on the jay's beat who would it be well, I think it would be my like colleague Gregor. Uh, don't come on. Let's go with someone out of the Toronto Star. Don't give us that. Um, <laughs> you know what? I think it'd be Keegan Matheson. He works at MLB.com and he has driven it before. So I presume I just wouldn't have to drive. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. Keegan, you get it. just because you're a good driver, Keegan. Yeah. Way to go. And I think he would, he would, I think he's, 
his snack game's pretty strong, so that's okay. good. We did discuss having to drive home, and uh, our um, Toronto Sun colleague, Ryan Wolstadt, who you know, refers to himself in the third person as the Waz. I'm not driving home with the Waz, man. The Waz, no chance. Like, the Waz is like, oh, we're going to drive home together. I was like, we are not driving home together, Waz. We're gonna drive the Waz. Home. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much doesn't even write Ryan Wolstadt on his bylines anymore. No, he says like he writes the was, the was now. Yeah. So the was that was a real reality for me, yeah. like considering driving home with the was. Although I have to say, he would play some good tunes. He's a good. He's got good music. We got love for the was. We got love for the was. We yeah. love the was, but the was drives us nuts. Yeah. Were you noticing changes on a day to day basis while you were down there? Whether it was extending the mix zone areas or the scrum areas to how limited, or what, did it all just kind of wrap up in one? Go. I mean, it wrapped up really quickly. I guess I got there the first day that I got there, it was the like six feet from the scrum situation. Yep. And that was like when all of us were standing for oh, like six feet, there's a like a, a, a rope barrier up between us and Charlie Montoya, like anybody who was doing a media scrum. But if you were just doing a one on one, you were still pretty close. The one thing about spring training that's so great is you can go into the clubhouse, like generally is that you go into the clubhouse, you can grab any guy you want, you can do it all yourself. And yeah. this time it was because we weren't allowed in the clubhouse by the time I got there, it was really hard. Like yeah. you couldn't grab players. There's all these different entrances that they can go in. You can't mm. just like lurk at their lockers and be like, you are going to have to talk to me like uh, that. Yeah. Point. Sounds like, sounds like major league soccer. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it like the yeah. best part about baseball is there's so much accessibility and you can go into the clubhouse and you can talk to these guys and you can find them yourself. Um, yeah. But when well, they put that down, you're like, damn. I mean, I'm always going to, whenever I have a chance, I always take a shot at Major League Soccer for this, but I find it ridiculous that multi-million dollar baseball players who are far more famous than MLS players have, uh, are free to talk to media way more easily than yeah. MLS players are. So, so there's ball. my shot at Major League Soccer. Right. What? Let's bring in Oliver Platt. Let's bring in Oliver Platt on this. Well, yeah, that, that was like an interesting topic, right? Because I think it was Grant Wall put that tweet out about how we don't really need locker room access in the first place, in his opinion. Yeah, and I'll. Yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't disagree with him that much, but I am a purely soccer guy. Yeah. And it was interesting to see like a lot of baseball reporters in particular like kind of pile on it on him saying we couldn't do our jobs without that kind of access. No. Yeah, I, it's a good it's a good point to bring up though, because obviously there's a million questions we have to answer before just getting back to play. But are you concerned at all on the beat that there are going to be now these long standing forever changes with how you do your job? Yeah, definitely. And I listen, I have also worked on you know, the soccer beat and I've worked on the basketball beat. The basketball beat does have a little bit more access because you can get into the locker room pregame for about a half an hour, but it's not the same as the Jays either. Um, and baseball, it's just, a, it's a different monster. And I, I am completely on the same page as you, Kurt. I think that Major League Soccer should be giving us way more access. We should be able to get guys on our own. That's how you develop relationships with players. Um, but for for baseball, it's 162 games. Like you cannot be relying on PR staff to have to go and find the guy that you need to talk to, particularly if you're looking for a story where you have to get three or four guys. Like no PR staff is going to be able to juggle requests from 15 or 20 different reporters for, you know, 40 different guys. Like that's not going to work. So we need to be able to get back into the locker rooms when this is all said and done. It just, it can't be changed because it's not going to give our readers like the breadth of coverage that they deserve. Yeah, it's really going to be interesting to see yeah. how, because yeah. I think each league is going to try their own system. Some mm -hmm. are going to believe this is their opportunity to get them out, and some are going to yeah. be like, no, this is how we fundamentally exist. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get back to more of the, the quarantine and how we've been passing the time towards the end of the show, but it was the weekend, and we're all just kicking back and relaxing, and I get a text message from Kurt, and usually I just try not to look at it when I'm not at work, but I was like, okay, what's going <laughs> okay, on? Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and he goes, I'm giving you a homework assignment. I go, Fantastic. Um, and I, once I learned it wasn't just for me, I was a little more open to it. Basically, we're having a competition with the four of us. It is for everyone. So we have to, we had to come up with a five aside team. And here are the very specific specifications as laid out by the one soccer expert. So thank you. Your team will consist of one current CPL player, one current MLS player, one retired player, international, any any retired player you want, and then three current players from any league aside from CPL MLS. One of them has to be female and a coach. So that all in all will be six players, one coach, and Kurt, because this was your baby, and you're going to tell us why you were right anyways. We'll let you No, I'm not. No, first. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to listen to everybody's argument. Now then, I, we're, after this, of course, we're going to have the fans vote on which team they think would win 
a round robin tournament. So I have developed this team based on who I think would beat Oliver, Laura, and your team Wait, in a uh, pandering to the audience. Yeah, but yeah, well, that's it's so on brand. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> let's uh, go. Before we came on here, you were talking about how bad your team was. So me? Here we go. No, no. Adam I'm, not worried. I'm not worried about cut. He he can do what he likes. <laughs> All right, and don't forget, we also need a coach. I added the coach on. All right. Oh, yeah. so, I didn't know that. Well, you have time because yeah, we'll get to the coach at the end. We'll get bending the rules already. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start in goal. Uh, I I'm going to put my CPL player there because uh, I think you want uh, the most talented players in the field, and nobody is going to kid themselves and say that a CPL player is going to get the caliber of some of these other guys in the field. So my CPL player is going to be my goalkeeper. Marco Carducci, uh, he's uh, pretty good with his feet. You need your goalkeeper to be good with his feet in a five-a-side game, uh, and he's a good shot stopper, best goalie in the league right now. So Marco Carducci is my CPL player. On to you, Laura. Uh, I went with Carducci, too. Smart. I'm offended. I feel, like, deep in my soul not good about this. Not that you, <laughs> you <laughs> like, But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with all of your rationale, which pains me to say. There, there is no other rationale. Like, you, like it's, it's okay. We'll get, we'll get into some disagreements after uh, on to the next pick. Yeah. Okay, I think this is – Ollie, I have a feeling it's going to be universal, but I went with Carducci, too, for the same reasons. Oh, my God. Plus, he's on. got a sweet new car. I, I messaged three different people about this from different – like just one of my buddies, someone in sports, just for their take on it. Everyone said Carducci, so you might as well make it. Okay, well, I haven't picked Carducci. Um, oh, here we go. Twist. Uh, my rationale is basically exactly the same, though. So I've just done the same thing, but with an MLS player. Uh, so I've got Westberg in that. I think he's the best keeper with his feet in, in MLS. And as Kurt said, you need a keeper who can play out. So <sighs> I got I got Q. So, so that means, Oliver Platt, that unless you've broken the rules that you are going to have a CPL player in the field. That's, that's correct. It makes absolutely no sense, but I will hear your rationale <laughs> after I give you, after I give you, uh, oh, uh Kurt first. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, let's start with the MLS defender. Uh, I'm going to go with Aaron long of the New York rebels. Uh, the rationale being he's a U.S. international. He's, uh, uh, a commodity right now on the international block. Um, I think he can play a bit, but he's also a really, really, really strong defender. He's mobile. You got to be able to move side to side quick in these games. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go with Long as my MLS player. Yeah, I'm not worried about Long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're, not, you're not supposed to be terrified of him. Like he's like my MLS defender. Like, he's, not... uh, he's, he's a good player, but he's, but he's his biggest strength for me is that he's pretty quick and athletic and there's no open field here. This is a small sided game. So. I'm feeling good. I have like I have like multiple staffers calling me right now, and they, they know we're doing a show at one o'clock. I have no idea why. All right, go ahead. Who are we at? Holly. All right. You you teased us with the off the board Carducci pick. So to explain who who's so up. Do you want, do you want my CPL pick? One of them is a defender. My CPL pick is a defender. I should yeah. Say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Know. Let's have it. All right. I got Daniel Crutzen. Uh, he fits fits. This. <laughs> he's he's an MLS caliber defender first and foremost. So so that's. I don't feel I'm, I'm at a disadvantage there. Um, like Westberg, he's really good with his feet. Excellent playing out the back. So he's my pick. You can't even, you're, he's, look, he's laughing at himself. I'm he's laughing, laughing at myself. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's laughing he's and you laughing, laughing as soon as the words came out of his mouth. <laughs> Okay. No, I mean, like, like, it's not, you know, it's not a ridiculous kind of Thank you. decision, but it's also, I'll take Aaron Long, but yeah. <laughs> Laura? Laura, please break this up. Uh, one of my, <laughs> sorry, I'm, uh, my brain's not working so well. Am I doing my MLS player? Yeah. Yes. My MLS player is Vela because uh, he is not an MLS caliber player, in my opinion. And uh, he, yeah, it's just damn good. So my rationale, though, is like, I get it that 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 Vela is, is quality. Mm -hmm. he, just, he just played at the most recent World Cup. Uh, but I just think like, from back to front, your CPL player should probably be your lowest caliber player. Apologies mm -hmm. to Marco Carducci. Mm -hmm. Your next lowest caliber player should be your MLS player. So, you know, I'm going to put that guy at the back to do a job. So, anyway, yeah. that's just where I'm at with that. I but Adam? I feel like, I mean, I feel like if you're putting your less caliber player in <laughs> net, which I am, like, which I just did, then I need to have a solid defender in front of him. 
Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Adam? So Carlos Vela, I think, is not a major league soccer. I think he's a b- better than major league soccer quality. I think he can go play wherever he wants. So I figure, you know, split the difference. Injury yeah. from. I, I don't disagree with that. I think Bella is like a, <laughs> Bella is like a top player for me. Yeah, he's. A, I mean, I don't know how much he cares all the time, so that like yeah. makes me wonder. But well, like, then we'll come back in, to that. Yeah. In this world, he gives a shit. Sorry, we'll come back to that. Hey, this, oh, yeah. this is yeah. online. We're there's <laughs> on no the internet. CRTC rules here. Do wow. do your thing. You've been locked up for nine days. Well, we're just right? curse as much as you crazy. want. All right. Okay. Just so um, just so, um, so so everybody knows, that we'll have a have your lineup ready at the end because I want to organize it that way. But go ahead, Adam. Okay, just to show that I'm not making this up, I am so far two for two with Laura. No so, way. Um, um, Vela, I don't buy. So, Kurt, I'm wondering how you're structuring this. Like they're playing full field and positions matter, which is a little bit surprising to me. No, well, in is a five it like aside a game, in a football kind of FIFA twenty, is it short no, field? In a five aside, in a five aside game, like you have, like there is, it's like organized chaos a little bit, right? Like you need your defenders to step up into the kind of attacking third a little bit, and you know, take on some some offensive responsibility, which is why I picked two good two guys that I feel are good enough on the ball to do that. So I'm gonna I'm going back to front. So I'm gonna go with my uh, my next defender, um, uh, Sergio Ramos, the Spanish international. Past it. Uh, Way past it. Somebody. We're, we're, we're talking about a mini field. We're talking about players that you need to be savvy, smart, good on the ball, when we're solid defender. Retired- Sorry, like, are we talking about retired players in their prime, or like the how they would play right now? No, like right now. No, 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 no. no. How they would play right now? But the retired player has got to be in his prime, right? No, no. What? What? Yeah. This is one of the worst things you've ever done. No, guys, like this is like you call him up tomorrow and he's on your five aside team. So, so if if someone's theoretically picked Pele, they're in trouble. Yeah. They're in a lot of trouble. So you have time to change. But all right. All right. All right. Well, I'm so anyway, just, but... just to go over mine, I have Carducci. And then in front of him, Aaron Long and Sergio Ramos. Who's next? Ollie. All right. Um, okay. So my other defender is Virgil van Dyke. Uh, best defender in the world. And, and hopefully you can outplay Aaron Long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, Laura. I think this is where you and I are going to split. But um, hit me. Okay, I'm I'm lost as to the way that I'm supposed to be doing this, but um, there are, there are no rules. Kurt will just make them player, up as he goes. My retired player is Patrick Vieira. Okay, hey, you're gonna be in trouble. Yeah, you're gonna be in trouble. No, you know, I still feel good about it. I think that Patrick Vieira can still like basically stand in the middle of a field and direct okay. the whole team. I'm not saying he couldn't like be. He needs to run. I'm not saying he couldn't he couldn't do it. I'm not saying he couldn't do some kind of job, but I think he's in a struggle a little bit, but. I, maybe I should have made the rules a little more clear, but that's your selection. So you got to yeah, skip I mean, a bit. It may be. Yeah. Your fault. yeah. <laughs> okay. So does that, so Laura jumped to retired. So do I want me to go retired or my next? Does it matter? Right. Really? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I'll stay in the retired vein and maybe this works out if he has to play now, because I think he's going to participate in a prison tournament, but Ronaldinho is my retired player. Real life longest has- yard. If we're playing by Kurt's rules, I I'd, just be, I'd be worried about what kind of shape he's going to be in when he shows up. But yeah, that story is wild. It's it's one of the the best. The, so the gist of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of it is he was arrested for trying to enter Paraguay with a forged Paraguayan passport. Is that that's right? That's exactly, yeah. that's exactly okay, the kind of guy I want. That's exactly the kind of guy I want on my team. But the passport hey. said he was Ronaldinho on it. It just said he was Paraguayan. Yeah. Like and, I, I'm and not sure is- how he expected that to go down. And this is a detail that I think I read and I didn't fact check it enough. So I could be wildly wrong, but apparently he like, there was no need for him to do that because with his Brazilian passport, he's good to get in the Paraguay anyways. Like it was just really stupid in a lot of regards, but anyways, that's the kind of creativity and just stick to that I want on my six aside team. Okay. Who are we on Laura or Oliver? I think we're on um, we? Yeah. Shoot. Sure. Yeah, okay. So moving further upfield, now I'm going into the midfield. Uh, I needed a two-way player. I took a risk here, I think, because the idea, you know, if if you want to win this tournament, you should probably pick the most recently retired person possible uh, because they're probably in the best shape fitness-wise. But love this player. I'm going with Paul Schools as my midfielder. Mm. Oliver, lo- Oliver agrees with the pick for once. Look at that. He, he's quality. And All right. Yeah, I like that pick. Imagine you were just like he's not quality. Like, he's called, like no, he's I had to look how I had to I had to look how old he was. I was hoping he was like 
41 for some reason then i was like he's 45 so i was like oh dear like yeah like i, I don't trouble. imagine he's the kind of guy who keeps himself in amazing shape mm, no i don't think so either but i think he, he kind of has that you know it depending on how long the halves were like let's say we're playing 10 minute halves i think he could give you a shift he can ping his, a few passes around yeah all right well like, um continuing in that vein in midfield my retired player is javi not yeah that. i almost went there i almost went there He's not that recently retired. I think it's only been a couple of years or something. And he doesn't really move much anyway. He makes the ball do the work. So I've gone with him. You need everybody. Okay. You need, you, my only thing with that pick, though, is that you need everybody to defend in this. Or at least man, at least four guys to defend well. But you need everybody to defend. But okay. Well, not if you don't give the ball away. Okay. Yeah. Or not, if ball you built, not, or if, not if you built your roster without knowing Kurt's terms and conditions. So well, that's really, I, I, really asked you guys, I asked you guys to include a retired player. Yeah. yeah, but like, has, has yeah. that ever in the history of like dream teams meant the player is actually like <laughs> 60 years old? <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? Okay, Laura, you're up. So we've got uh, you retired um, already. Okay, so we'll dip so, back into MLS. So, yeah, I'm going to go back into my, I guess I'm on my other three players. So yes. my, my female player is Lucy Bronze, mm, two way player. Yeah. You know, she that makes sense. She really well. She can run like crazy. That makes sense. sense. Okay. No problem with that one. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Kurt. Really? I'm actually, je- I'm actually jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous of the pick a little bit, but okay. Uh, I guess I will go then in the same. I'll just keep doing. I'll follow Laura's lead here. Uh, Kristen Press is my women's player mm, because I, like I think she no. is the next best thing on the American team. Everything I saw f- from her in training, the way she carried herself, and she's just fine. She scored like two or three unbelievable goals in the She Believes Cup, and um, I think she's gonna fit right in. She's love when, I'm gonna, what? I'm gonna love when Oliver picks Alex Morgan, like a pregnant Alex Pino. Morgan. Pino? <laughs> <laughs> um, does Press even get in the US's best eleven? No, Everyone's like, there? it's a terrible yeah. selection. No, it's not. <laughs> Surely it'd be Heath Morgan or Pino, right? Uh, that's what I think. So hey, this I is my team. We're gonna have to move on from that midfield at some point. Okay. Um, who's who's next? Is it is it, is it back to me or is it on Oliver? It's you again. It's you? your, okay. your game, Kurt. <laughs> All right. So I am I'm I'm going to give you my female player is actually Tobin Heath from the United States. Uh, mobile works for Socks Off. Uh, I think she's one of the the most energetic players on the U.S. and uh, she's going to be playing up front for me. Up front. Okay. I didn't. I, I liked it more as a midfielder. I'll be honest. Yeah. I have one. I have, I have one midfielder. I'm playing a two-one-two. All right. But she's but she's working back. She's working back. Don't worry. Ollie. All right. Hang on, where are we here? Two. Okay, so I've got one midfielder and one forward left, right? Yeah. Sure. So this Whatever is what formation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about putting a more of a defensive player in there. I had Kante in mind, but I've decided against it. I'm gonna put Messi in the midfield instead of up front. Oh, um, okay. We're gonna we're gonna go all in. Elaborate. On, like, keep the ball. So you're uh, not, yeah, you're not defending it. Oh uh, no, man, no, that's no. okay. We're gonna let the people decide who's in a, who's a more sound <laughs> team. But I, yeah, I don't think you can have Xavi and Messi on the same team. But that's just me. Well, that's what we're going with. All right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Next, mm-hmm. Laura. Um, to pair with Lucy Bronze, and I, I've got a two-one-two too. Um, but I'm putting Virgil van Dijk with Lucy Bronze. A little bit of brawn and a little bit of speed, you know? Okay. Um, okay, so back to my two internationals or any player I want. And uh, Alfonso Davies, welcome to my squad for your versatility, for your speed, and I think you'll play pretty well with my coach. Teaser. Great. Yeah. Uh, that's an indulgent pick. I know. That's 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 my the team pick. is that's, an indulgent pick. That's either that's a pick indulgent pan- squad. That's either pandering to the Canadian voters who are going to put this to, or it's just mindless at this I mean, point. You're really, pandering. Don't. <laughs> you're wearing a sweater that says "Cheers, everybody! Vote for my team." What are you talking about? <laughs> right, so uh, my final selection. Uh, um, I'm going with Messi, and he's just kind of playing with. He's just doing whatever whatever he wants to do. I have four players that. Uh, um, that that'll that'll help on the defensive side. Messi is kind of just he's just getting involved wherever he wants to. He's just good. All right. So yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I did pick seven players here, so I'm, I've confused <laughs> myself a little bit. <laughs> 
but uh, so my what last... we've learned is no one knows the rules. No one knows how to do math. I'm used possible? to playing. I'm used to playing seven aside, and so my formation kind of screwed me. Uh, anyway, one. anyway, I've got my my female player left, and that was an easy choice. Uh, Vivian Miedema, mm. best player in the world, mm. in my opinion, and she's just going to stand up front and uh, finish all the chances that this team creates. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. It's real good. All right, Laura, round it up. Um, so to recap, Carducci, Van Dyke, Bronze at the back, Vera in the midfield, Vela, and Messi. Obviously, everybody's got messy. No Ronaldo love, and I don't. I don't blame anybody. If you have Ronaldo, then you you you, you don't. Adam. <laughs> okay, so I was of two minds here. Trent Alexander Arnold made sense to me because I needed a proper fullback, just with everything else going on in my team. But because this is my team and there are no rules, I'm taking the pick that's going to get chastised the most. Gareth Bale, welcome to my team. Oh, oh my god. Man. Eh, I mean, it's a better selection than Ronaldo for me, but. I don't know. Uh, Alexander days. Arnold with Alfonso Davies? That was like a consideration. But, but is Davies a left back? We'll get to that later. Okay. okay. So uh, I, had, I added this late. I want, I wanted to add it in the coach late. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be curious to see what you guys have done with the coach, because for me, the coach is more than a coach. The coach is also the player who, the coach or the, the, the coach is, is also someone who could step in in case oh of injury to your team. <laughs> this is so, another rule that no one else has been told about before. If one of <laughs> if one of your players goes down in the field, you need your coach to step yeah. in as your bench player. So I'm going with Ryan Giggs as my coach. Hey, I'll give you some love. Ryan Giggs. And he's stepping in anywhere on the field and he's making a difference. So who um, I just want to, before we get too far, our, do we need our like head athletic therapist name too at this point so he can wow. come in or think she about can come it. in yeah, if anything right. happens? Okay. You guys don't, you guys don't, you guys don't like your coach selections now, do you? That I've explained. No, I love I've, my coach I've, selections. I've, I love it's great. I've, out, I've outwitted all of you, so. Three like, words. You just lied to us, kind of. <laughs> Three words. So winning. Heavy metal football. What? Anyone? Jurgen Klopp is my coach. I want counterattack. I want high energy, and I just want him running all of my pressers. You guys thought. You guys out, see, you see. You guys thought. You, you, you guys thought about this exactly how I thought you were going to. I love this. <laughs> the game we didn't know the rules to is going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a good plan. <laughs> all right, round this out. Round yeah, this round out. This out. All right. Well, I've, I'm just going to stick to my guns and, and not be swayed by uh, that late rule change. So I've got Pep. No rule. There's no rule change. Yeah, there's no rule change. They just weren't announced until right now. Well, it's no okay. big difference, yeah. Ollie. It's... Pep Guardiola. Okay, do you even want to defend it, or just is it self-explanatory for you? Um, like I, I like Klopp a lot, but I still think Pep is the best coach in the world, and he's gonna be working with Xavi and Messi again. So that's my that's my pick. And coming in off the bench in case either one of them gets hurt. Yeah, he could probably replace Xavi. Yeah. Okay, Laura. Please bring uh, some sense to this situation. No, I will not. <laughs> uh, since we've uh, decided uh, re quite recently that this player Here is going to come off the bench, Here I'm going to go with Miguel Arteta. Oh, like, I thought you had coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you shouldn't come off the bench. Kurt, you were expecting a Thierry Henry there, weren't you? I was. I was, and I was going no, to. Guys, to... I can't. I can't. I was going to laugh. I was going to laugh because I could just see him just hanging around up, 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 up in the other. Up in the other box, yeah, not doing anything. Bella, Messi, and Cherry on the same team. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, mine. let's go through it. Hold on. Two, two, one, two. Right there. You can see it written down. There's all my guys on the pitch with the coach. The coach is the key for me. Okay. Yeah, that's mine. Sorry, Angolo. Hold it up. Okay. Westberg, Van Dyke, Kritzen, Javi, Messi, Adama, and Coach Pep. Laura, are you done right? I'll, I'll do mine while you finish writing. I'm not done yet. Carducci, Carlos Vela, Ronaldinho, Kristen Press, Gareth Bale, Go Wales, Alfonso Davies, and Jurgen Klopp. Playing in the one 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 formation. Nice. It's it's a free-for-all. There is no formation. I'm modeling it after our one soccer exploits. That's all I know anymore. Okay. Okay, here we go. Does this make sense? Can you see it? <laughs> yep. Really? Yep. We got this. Yeah. Carducci, Bronze, Van Dyke, Vieira. Did I spell Vieira right? I don't think so. Vela, Messi, Arteta, 
it's golden. It's all right. It's gonna we'll win. put There's we'll put it out to the public. Dreams. We'll put it up. We'll put it out to the public after this. We'll uh, we'll get our crack social media digital chief of everything Armin on it, and he maybe he'll do a Twitter poll. That might be the simplest way. And then feel free to write in your comments why I have the best team because there are no rules, and this is all about having fun. Okay, Kurt, how how did this go? Are, are you satisfied? Yeah, I'm satisfied that I have the best team. I mean, the public doesn't always agree with me, so uh, I think they'll probably hold that against me. Um, but anybody uh, with a, uh, a feel for the game will understand where I'm going. Good enough. All right, let's move on now. <laughs> let's, uh, let's leave that. We can revisit that another time. That was fun. I'll give you that. You kept us, you kept us on the edge of our seats because we literally didn't know what was coming next. Let's talk um, some national team, Canada international soccer. Uh, let's backtrack. Let's talk Olympics because that's the biggest, most recent piece of news in the world right now. Um, it might be oversimplifying for me to say it's not surprising news. It was perhaps surprising that Canada decided that they were going to do it first um, and they saw the opportunity to make a statement and be leaders. But in the grand scheme of things, perhaps add this into your reflection, but there's there's no way the Olympics start on time, right? I think we're all in an agreement there. So for Canada to say they're not sending a team, it's not big news, but it's, it's noteworthy. Laura, I guess first crack at you. I mean, I think it still is big news because I think somebody had to step up and say, we're not going collectively. You know, you've seen some of the U.S. government, like the bodies, like the athletic bodies and stuff or the swimmers saying, we don't want to go. You needed a country to say, we're not going. And I think you also need more countries to step up and say, we're following Canada because the IOC is the IOC and they're going to drag their feet as long as possible. And if anybody was going to keep a sporting event going, it would be the IOC, like when they shouldn't be. Um, so I think that it was bold of Canada to do it. You kind of go, wow, every time something gets canceled, a league or an event or whatever, but you're like, oh wait, in the grand scheme of things, this is not about yeah. sports anymore. You know, this is about people's health and it's about all of the people that would that would be going into Japan, all of the people who would be watching those games, putting yourself in harm's way. It's not it's not worth it. It's not worth it for those athletes to train and then to be concerned that they're gonna get sick. So I mean, I think it was great by Canada. I was I'm impressed that they're taking the lead on this. Um, and I think it's, it's on the IOC now to be like, yeah, we're going to do it. Do I think that they're going to like have a response today saying we're postponing? No, because I think they're going to drag it out as long as they possibly can. I, I think it's think... a great point. The health, the health has got to be number one. And I think that's why the, the athletes just wanted answers. Is it oversimplifying Kurt? Maybe you can comment on this. The IOC is going to wait as long as possible, just because the, the only thing they're concerned about for the most part, big picture business-wise is money right? This is well, going to be a big financial loss. How do they recoup as much of that as possible? Yeah. Um, I'm not really one to pile on international committees because they are what they are. I think for, for Canada, it was an easy decision because if your athletes aren't training, then you don't want to put them in a bad decision, right? Or a bad situation, right? So I imagine most of the athletes have, have had to suspend high level training. So of course, you're going to pull the plug on that. You don't want to send your athletes into a situation where they aren't even prepared. Uh, so easy decision for, for Canada. For the IOC, I imagine they're just trying to wait every single day they can. I mean, I think I think the end is probably approaching. Uh, but, you know, are they trying to get to April and see if there's some kind of resolution to this, which nobody's expecting there to be? Uh, that, that's probably the situation. They're probably just trying to wait to the very, very last minute before they before they cancel. And I can understand that to a certain extent. But, but the, pressure, the pressure is definitely on now. I don't think that the conversation should be about canceling. I think the conversation should be about postponing, right? Yeah, so yeah, you're, yeah. Not, you're not losing as much of the you're not losing as much of the financial stuff if you're postponing. You're, you're, there's going to be logistical changes, of course, but you know they've yeah. done that for Euro. They did that, and Euro's still a massive tournament too. They did mm -hmm. that pretty damn quickly. Why aren't they doing that? Yeah. For yeah, I think Canada yeah. have probably done them a favor, to be honest, because now they can say, well, one yeah. nation's pulled out. So a we have. Yeah. yeah. And and there's probably going to be, you know, a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Australia have maybe done it too, or maybe making that up. But anyway, you'd expect. I think Australia it. said that they told their athletes to expect postponement, expect right. 2021, so, but they haven't formally said we won't go. Right. So you're going to expect more nations to follow suit, and then that kind of makes their decision for them. But there's no way that, that it can be this summer. No. No. Okay, we're all in agreement there. So much we could get into. Uh, I'll, I'll open this to the floor. Should we talk a little more about what impact this will have on the women's team, if any, if it does go another year in players? Or do we want to talk about the situation with the men's team with John Herdman and all that? What, uh, what are we feeling right now? You're the moderator. 
Okay, well then, if it's my decision, I, I producer Kyle Meyer, I was just looking for backup. I, I do want to post a question to everyone because there's a lot of talk, especially after the Olympic qualifiers and what we saw, a bit of a lackluster three fixtures at Tournoi de France. But with how old Canada's veterans are getting, if this goes to 2021, will we see that same team if we have to wait one more year? And is it more of a detriment that we might have to wait another year, or does that give time for the Rebiers and the Haitimas to to flourish a little bit and keep getting better? Yeah, I'm sure you're going to see at least close to the same team because they've used pretty much the same team for the last few years. Uh, I'm not really into that argument about, you know, one year makes a massive difference and Christine Sinclair a year older, just like I wasn't into it when, you know, everybody said Tom Brady was too old and he wouldn't want a Super Bowl at the age of whatever he was a few years ago, right? So I don't think the year is going to hurt them. If anything, it might help them a little bit. Um, I, I, I thought they were pretty tactically inflexible. Uh, at the women's uh, Olympic qualifiers, uh, especially in the game against the United States, um, I don't, I don't think a year hurts them in any way. Um, but, but we'll see if it gives time for maybe someone else to come into the team. I just doubt it, given the roster and the selection over the last few years. Yeah, they, they've got to. For me, they just go out play the veteran players, right? Like the transition will happen when that happens. I don't think it really yeah. makes sense to kind of slot them in just because they are younger. Um, and that, that to me was kind of the you know the, the brazil game was better at least in, in the second half but the the alarming thing about the tournament in france was that diana matheson came back and and looked like one of canada's best players almost straight away and mm -hmm. so you, you're just wondering you know when they're still relying on kind of 35 year old players like that you, you know the young players just need to be better if, if they're going to displace those players i do think that you've seen though the players like diana matheson sophie schmidt um Desiree Scott slow down recently, and I think that they will probably slow down a little bit more um, in the next year. I think that they're elite talents to be able to still be playing at this this time. But as you said, it's concerning that the young people are the young players are not kicking them out of the starting lineup. And I don't think I think that the rate at which the veteran players will now slow down is going to be faster than the rate at which the younger players improve. So. Yeah. That, that is my concern, that you're still playing the veteran players next year um, when they're probably maybe a step behind what they are right now. And, and I don't think Christine Sinclair is going to be a step behind what she is right now because I think, A, she's adapted her game fairly well to accommodate being a step behind what she used to be. But also she's an elite player, right? But the other players like the Sophie Schmitz, the, Diana, uh, the Desiree Scotts, who have to run a heck of a lot more and have to do a lot more work, like they should have younger players being – really competing for those spots and they don't. And that's the problem that we've seen with Canada is that the transition is not happening very well. It's not happening sort of seamlessly. Right. You're not seeing these young players come in and sort of make names for themselves. And that's a problem. So is that going to make their like Olympic chances more difficult next year? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And there's, I mean, I don't know the youth system that well, but is there any evidence to suggest there's a lot of quality coming through at the youth level, given what just happened at the U20 world cup? I don't know. I think the U20 world, the U20 CONCACAF is what CONCACAF was, qualification. Yeah, yeah. It, it um, that was definitely concerning because you are seeing how top heavy it is. So I, I'm with you there. That that is a concern. There's only a couple players. I think Olivia Smith, I believe, is is like close. She was on the provisional squad, but that's not enough to to save your team. Okay, let's um, we'll park this for now. Let's talk a little. Um, men's national team and particularly because we have Laura on and you over the years you've worked around and closely with John Herdman so there's so much we could chop chomp off here with the uh, them not getting uh, friendlies now and how that's going to affect um, their chances of making the World Cup now that the hex looks really unlikely um, but I guess let's just dive more into Herdman right now because we have Laura on and we're already at 40 minutes into this discussion. So I make sure, we want to make sure we get to this. So uh, what are your impressions so far, Laura, on the job Herdman's done? There's a, a bigger sample size, but their their biggest obstacle or their biggest goal still seems to be eluding them. Yeah, like, listen, to begin with, I never thought John Herdman was taking this team for the 2022 World Cup. Like, I, th I thought that wow. was Wow, boom. Um, <laughs> You know, it's nice for him to say it, and, and John is is a, a great uh, communicator. He's a great motivator, um, and I, I I have to give him very big credit for the fact that he seems to have really got this young team on board, and I think that that's the most important thing that he could be doing right now. Like, these guys seem to really want to run through a brick wall for him, and I, I didn't know if that was going to translate from what he did before with the women to the men's team. You know, he speaks sometimes a lot in, like, 
you know, if it is to be, it is up to me or like, oh, what, what's your like favorite, what's his favorite one? Like, uh, cometh the moment, cometh the woman or whatever, or, you know, it's not about age, it's about how good you are. Like, he, he just speaks in these like idioms all the time. And I didn't know if that was going to translate. Like, he really picked the women's team up from like a breaking point where they needed those motivating sort of speeches when he first came on and I didn't necessarily think the men's team was in that place so I wasn't sure if those guys were just gonna like roll their eyes and be like come on John like what's up here um but I think he's done a really good job of making them um believe in him I I just I think that it, it was it was too much to ask to get to 2020 2022 and I, I think that his focus should be 2026. Oliver do you want to go first? Um so where do we want to go 20 should we talk about 2022 for a bit? I, I, I'm I, going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about, yeah, I'm going to talk about what I, what my opinion is right now of the team and their chances, but yeah, I, I, follow, I, you can follow, you can follow Laura. I may be not so pessimistic about that pathway. Like obviously it's going to be that crazy knockout tournament thing at, at the bottom of the con of CONCACAF. Um, look, they're the best teams that you're going to face in that are what, like Panama, Curacao. Then you have to play the fourth place team from a hex. And then you have to hope that you, don't draw the South American team from in the intercontinental playoffs. So there's a ton of like if spots and maybes in there, but I don't think it's an impossible route. Um, so I, so I it's a more difficult route though. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Just, it is. Yeah. I don't think it's substantially um, more difficult. Okay. Okay. Let me let me let me go. So can I can I can I just butt in for one quick second? This won't be altering or life altering but IOC just announced that Tokyo will be postponed due to coronavirus. Oh, there you go. They just called USA it. Today Call, reporting. Called it, yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah, so that um that just came from USA today about a minute ago. So that ties okay. a bow on our last conversation. Anyways, Kirk, please please take it away. Okay. I'm going to breathe out here. This is should this, we sit back to Bayless routine here. This <laughs> this <laughs> this Canada team is good enough to make the 2022 World Cup through the hex, in my opinion. The problem is that they will not be in the hex, even had they played uh, these most recent friendlies, which were to be broadcast on one soccer, I'll remind you, uh, against Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, even if they won those games, the chances of making the hex was still very unlikely. I will remind you that this is the same Canada team that completely dominated the United States in a home Nations League match. Probably the best game I've ever seen a Canadian team play. So had they gotten to the Hex, as long as you win your home matches in the Hex, you stand a really good chance of qualifying directly to a World Cup. And outside of, you know, playing Mexico, who they probably could do okay against at home, maybe, um, they could have won four games at home. They could have picked up 12 points. Sometimes that's enough to get to a World Cup in CONCACAF. The problem, as Oliver Platt agreed, is that now they go into the uh, Minnows tournament, uh, in all likelihood, and we'll have to get past the likes of Trinidad and Tobago, who uh, I will remind people they have not beaten on the road since 1988. I have the numbers or the, the dates written right here. They have to go to Panama, potentially. They have never won on the road at Panama. Uh, they have to go to Haiti, potentially, who I will remind you, they just lost to at a Gold Cup. Does anybody know the last time Canada went to Haiti and won? I, no, the, I year was, the, year, the year was 1985. This is very dramatic. <laughs> they might have to go to Guatemala. They did win there somewhat recently in 2004. My point being, they have to get through a number of difficult home-and-home uh, -home playoff games against teams that they usually don't beat on the road. So could they overcome that? Potentially. But then as Oliver Platt said, they better hope they don't draw, uh, I don't know, uh, Ecuador in the, the, the playoff game. So if it's South America, it would probably be tougher than that. It would be like Colombia or someone. Yeah. So that, so that would be a backbreaker. Yeah. That, that's, that's where I'm at, guys. I that's where I'm at. Think way too much about this U.S. game. Like it was a great moment, like sure. But then they went and got dominated by the U.S. on. And it's not like, they lost one nil or two nil. It's like they got dominated by the U.S. a month yeah. later. Like you got to show consistency. And one of the things that this team hasn't yet been able to do is show consistency. So, like, if you're like, would they be able to show consistency in the hex? You just have to. That's what I'm saying. Is you just have to show consistency at home. 
and then get it right on the road. And that's the one thing I don't think this team's prepared to do is as we saw in that return league, as Laura said, they were played off the park. You can't do that in CONCACAF. You have to, you have to play your home games the way you want to play them. And then you got to go on the road and survive. Yeah, that's, that's something the, Canada can't do. That's the exact same story in the lower region as well, though. You win your home games and you don't completely implode away from home. Yeah, but there's so no evidence. There's there's no evidence Canada's ever not imploded away from home. Okay, so why would they be better off in the hex then? Well, it's still it's still like I'm not expecting them to finish top two. I'm saying a third place finish would probably be a reasonable ask given how good the team plays at home. Yeah, to be honest, like. I think, I don't know, I don't want to sound naive here because I know CONCACAF is an interesting region, but for me, this is a completely different Canada team and we should raise our expectations that they can get an away result at places like Panama and Curacao and Haiti. Like, for, for me, with the caliber of player we're talking about now, that should not be an unreasonable I'm not. I'm not saying that they can't do that. What I'm saying is I don't have faith that they can do it three or four times in a row. All they need is a nil-nil against. I know, but I'm but I'm saying it's more likely that Panama is able to do that again to them. Panama is able to come to BMO Field, sit back, get a one-nil loss or a draw, and then go down and, and win in Panama City like usual. If Panama, be, if Panama beats Canada by multiple goals, that would be a big failure for me on the part of the men's national team with the talent that is in that team. A hairy, it's a hairy situation to be in. I've been in those stadiums. <laughs> it is, but anyway. That, you, if you go into it with that attitude, you lose before you're on the pitch. Like they, they've got to go. Uh, John over Herdman that. is going to be taking his idioms from you. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver Platt idiom machine. There we go. All right. Where are we stuff. going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Um, we, I'd say we have about 13 minutes before we we wrap it up. Let's talk a little TFC because the three of you have experience on that beat. Um, first of all, can I get some confirmation? I've heard some rumors since I started at One Soccer. Did Kurt really watch games with his headphones on so that other members of the media wouldn't come up and talk to him during the game? This or can you confirm or deny? offensive to me because I sat right next to him. And he oh, sat next to the man. wall on the other side. So it was, it's, I'm particularly offended. But yeah, he did. And they weren't like they weren't like these headphones either. They oh, were no. like they were like <laughs> huge. Um, and he would like do his like pregame like um, pump up when he listened to Kygo. Kygo? Yeah. Kygo yeah, and like, Selena Gomez for a while? That was like I, a real thing. Well, you know, when you're producing the kind of quality content that I'm producing, you know, everybody should, you know, follow suit and potentially listen to Kygo themselves. Yeah, it was like a big <laughs> Kygo season the last season that Kurt was around. And yet you still agreed to come onto the One Soccer panel after all that. You are a bigger person than... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's that's metal worthy okay let's um quickly we we could d- do a deep dive but let's just do a quick take um obviously mls on hold as well but what what is the state of tfc right now assuming they will eventually get onto a normal schedule or some kind of schedule that makes sense for everyone what's realistic for them in their current state and uh, i guess we'll give laura the first word because kurt and Ollie just had a five minute monologue on and the men's. <laughs> i prepared that by the way i practiced in the mirror this morning I don't doubt that. Oh, I mean, we can tell. I don't doubt that. <laughs> that was cool. um, I like still do not, I still wouldn't bet against this team. I don't know. Like I haven't been around them as much as before, but like I, I ultimately think that these players still know how to win. I think it's their last season of this group. I, and I, and I am concerned about next year, how they're transitioning their young players. Like I don't necessarily know that they've done that very well. Um, but health being the number one priority for these guys as long as they can stay healthy i, I still think that they can win yeah they yeah. can i mean yeah they can def, def, think, they can definitely win yeah and i think it's great that well great for tfc in some ways well nothing's great coronavirus is not great for anybody but like you i think playing i think having michael bradley in the midfield is paramount still i am not on the liam Fraser train like some people are and i definitely think that we need to like that team needs to have Michael Bradley to, to win. And, and if they have a little bit of time where he gets to recover, so he's missing fewer games, I think that'll be huge for them. Now, how many games he's going to be able to play after having surgery, we'll see. But I think that, that could be huge. Just for those keeping score at home, this is our third one soccer hangout. And now two of the three shows, we have made the argument that coronavirus is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kurt. Or Ollie, sure. no, go ahead. I'm sure everybody's reasonable out there won't hold that against us. <laughs> um, I don't I mean, in terms of where TFC is today, we're two games into the season, similar team to last year. Um, for me, it's maybe about 
you know, the window right now, like it's a win now team. Uh, are we a few years away from seeing the club really, really regress just given the age of some of the players and maybe other players, maybe a Marky Delgado wanting to move on. Um, not a ton of, you know, young players coming through. So I'm, that's, that's the most interesting storyline for me right now. Uh, and I was also saying it two years ago, so maybe I'm I'm premature still. But just you know, it's a win now team, and 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 what happens in a, a year or two years from now when uh, uh, things definitely have to change in terms of the big signings and 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 people become you know well into their thirties. I mean, what TFC has done really well, Kurt, because I think that when you were having that conversation two years ago about whether or not it's like too it's going to start regressing. Like TFC's done a really good job of bringing people in. And when you can spend the money that they can spend, they, yeah. they do a really good job of their team selection. Now that, that part of the interesting thing for me is that they did that under a different GM largely. Um, so how will Ali Curtis be able to pick up where beds left off um, is definitely going to be a topic of conversation uh, going forward. Um, but I, I, I mean, they, they've managed to like not have to rebuild, which is a yeah. really, impressive thing for any any sport sports organization yeah they keep, they keep extending that window but like yeah. the, the interesting thing for me is going to be how much they're willing to spend when that finally does come to an end yeah. um, like are they going to be willing to be in atlanta who are paying like 10 million dollars to bring in you know a young player who's going to go on to europe and or one no. of the big leagues over there Mm-hmm. Or are they going to suddenly, you know, maybe start cutting back a little bit more? And, and that would be interesting to see. We've, but... we've already, I mean, we've already seen, you know, the Pablo um, Piotti situation. Right. right. Uh, yeah. like, you know, they go for a cheaper, older player instead of maybe spending a bit more on a, yeah, like that, a, an album. If, if that doesn't come good, you know, and, and you get a few more of those kind of deals and signings, that's how you begin to, you know, deteriorate as a roster. Mm-hmm. So. I think it's a really good point. And the franchise, to me, that sort of constant rebuild on the fly reminds me of is the Pittsburgh Penguins in the NHL, where they're just trying to prolong Crosby and Malkin as long as they can. So every time you think it might be it, they still find a way to be one of the more competitive teams. So good chat, everyone. We've got about eight minutes left before we say goodbye. Uh, More news rolling in. UEFA postponing Women's Champions League, Champions League, and Europa League. Ontario shutting down all essential or non-essential services um don't have the details on that last one yet but so what LC i'm trying to get to service. it depends it? on who you ask we're gonna have to do some investigation it's a grocery store so the lcb is a grocery store right but what that means is that it doesn't look like this physical distancing working from home scenario is going far at least for the time being so I asked the question around the horn, what shows are you watching or what video games are you playing? But unless there are, there are any teetotalers here, what is the alcoholic drink you are pairing with said show or video game? Who wants to go first? Uh, oh, I think Laura should go first because we gave the shows we were watching uh, on Friday uh, when Asa was on hosting. So maybe Laura goes first with the shows and then she can pair it with, uh, with anything she wants. Um. I just heard that Crave TV is offering a month long. Everybody should know that Crave TV, if you don't have it, is offering like a free month. Wow. Yeah. So do, they, do, they, do they automatically convert your credit card? I don't know. I, I <laughs> haven't looked into it. So like, here's a like really um, baseless news alert from me. Um, so I'm going to watch Veep. I've never watched Veep before. So I want to watch okay. Veep. I want to try Succession. Oh, and so I am good. like endlessly watching the Great British Baking Show. Like that's that's the Great British Bake Off is like my number one thing. Here's the thing though, I never drink at home, which is so weird. I, I have this like bar cart back here that you guys were like inquiring about earlier. Sounds I healthy. never drink at home, and people keep uh, messaging me, being like, "Can I bring you wine?" And I'm like, um, "No, I'm like fine." But I I did open a bottle of wine. Wait, you turned down free wine? Can we like unpack people, that a little bit? I mean, I don't want people to be going outside for me, for my wine. But I've had a number of friends who have said like, oh, I spent $160 on an LCBO delivery last night. And I'm like, cool. Like maybe I should be doing that. I don't know. Is that what all the cool kids are doing? Well, that's what producer Kyle's doing. I think yeah. it's $450 before yeah. the show. So that's the current state. Get someone to like drone one in to you on your balcony. All the way up to the 20th floor. There you go. Challenge is locked. Yeah. Depends how close you are to the island airport. Um, Ollie, what are you drinking with your bingeable shows? Well, I just finished Chernobyl, so I need a new show. Mm. If mm-hmm. anyone's got any suggestions. Did you like it? 
It was Love. like a, it's, I didn't, I wouldn't say I liked it. No, Love it's Island. Yeah, like, <laughs> it, it was good. It was good, but it's good. Okay. Yeah. Give, give, Love, Island, kind of give Love Island a try, man. Love Island? Love yeah. Island, man. Do it. I, wa- I watched a series of that two years ago and I don't think I'm going to go back. Have you guys watched Love is Blind? Yeah. I've watched yeah, two and then I couldn't. Not continue. a good show. Not a good it's show. It's like a car crash. I could not keep my eyes off of it. Yeah. Let me let me throw I, I this. Can, let me... I can watch some Bachelor and Bachelorette for that same reason, but Love is Blind stuff, is a but... whole pivot. Yeah. Let me throw this out to the group. Let me throw this out to the group. Not only has my five aside team embarrassed Oliver Platt today, I'm going to embarrass him a little further here. <laughs> Oliver Platt does not like Breaking Bad. In fact, he says yeah. it's a terrible show. Oh, I, I, I support something, that. I thought something embarrassing, really embarrassing, was coming there. I've never. No, seen no, I'm with I'm with Ollie. <laughs> I I don't like Breaking Bad either. Massively overrated. Game of Thrones over Breaking Bad. Every Laura, year. Laura, anybody I've is. I've is not it... watched either of those shows. Ooh. Well, I guess I've just embarrassed myself. I guess I've just embarrassed <laughs> yeah. myself on this one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go back to your fans on Twitter for some backup. Okay. I'm sure it'll come pouring well, in. What are you I drinking, said, Kurt? Uh, I'm drinking a lot. Uh, in the... <laughs> And that's where we're going to wrap up the show today, everybody. Uh, not not as in volume, not as in volume. I just have a <laughs> wide variety in my pantry, and I'm pairing it with Love Island. Uh, we're also watching this show right now on a documentary on Netflix about a guy in Florida with tigers. Oh, the tiger show. Yeah. <laughs> I want to watch that. It is insane. It like looks It is insane. It is like you think like the spring breakers and the people ignoring the coronavirus warnings in Florida are crazy. I do. Like I do. this, yeah. this is this guy is that plus tigers everywhere. Oh my god! So if that's the way to sell a show. <laughs> uh, and I'm and I'm pairing it with a very refreshing Michelob Ultra. Okay, uh, nice. my, calorie my conscious. Father, nice. My father-in-law oh. just knocked on the door. Uh, we're, right. we're almost done. Ollie, did we get your drink in or just what you were watching? No, well, I, I like to like pair it with the show. I like to True. like pair it with the show, right? So um, while I was watching Chernobyl, I bought a bottle of vodka, which my girlfriend gave me the biggest eye roll about in ever when, when I when I came in and decided to drink vodka while watching this uh, just Russian, like straight? Russian show. Oh, yeah. This, oh, dude, yeah. that's good. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. disgusting. No, that's, no, Wait, that's only the only way to do it. You got to immerse yourself in the show. No, yeah, that's fair. It's, that's it's, fair. Been in the, it's been in the freezer, but no ice. That's fair. Yeah. Vodka neat for Ollie. Yeah. But uh, all right, that's fair. So I, I'm I'm sort of agreeing with the two of you, which is an unusual dynamic for me, but it depends on what I'm watching. If I'm like playing video games with some buddies from back home, it's just like Bud Light because it's quick and it's easy. Um, but if I'm watching a movie that like I want to focus on and really enjoy, it's bourbon neat, like Maker's Mark probably. Um, otherwise it's, it's like a Malbec for, for a good TV show or a trashy TV show it really just depends. Wow. Okay. A Malbec. Fancy. Well, lovely. <laughs> for me, it doesn't depend on the show. For me, I have Michelob Ultra and I have 30 of them and, uh, I grab one per night. Maybe what two. happens when you don't have 30 anymore? Well, I don't know. Uh, I also have uh, underneath that a 30 of, uh, Mill Street Organic. Um, okay. so they're just stacked on top of each other right now. Uh, I did panic buy beer uh, about a week ago, so maybe it was a smart move. So will you just like go through the whole thirty of Michelob Ultra first, and then go to the the, the Mill Street? You would never like just like uh, yeah, in. I, I couldn't do that. I need variety. No, no, I would. Yeah. It's just a it's just a matter of not wanting to move the box off on off top of the other one. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, I can't believe it's been... This is, this is dying. Let's get out of here. I can't believe it's been an hour. Um, Laura, thank you very much for hanging out with us. We uh, really appreciate it, and we hope you can survive the rest of your quarantine and then come hang out with us again soon. Thanks, Vote for me. We know your team. Uh, Ace is back tomorrow. No. Yeah, do, make sure you get your votes in for your best five or six aside or whatever Kurt's rules were by the end of it. I think we all forgot. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, Who's in the background? The baby's he, here. Hey, CPL's there. Come on in. There all he right. is. We're going to come wave oh. goodbye to everyone. His, Ace is back first, tomorrow with Ben Fisk, 1 p.m. His first TV appearance. Uh, sign off the show. Is Vic, <laughs> Victor's got to sign him to a contract now, right? Bye. Oh, <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.